Church in Kennewick, Washington. This is the first Sunday in Advent, November the 29th, 2020, and because we have been separated since last March from our normal worship facility, we will be doing the Liturgy of the Word, and uh, join with us if you would. Light and peace in Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday of Advent when we recall the hope we have in Christ. The hope candle is also called the prophet candle. The prophets of the Old Testament, especially Isaiah, waited in hope for Messiah and his arrival. God told Abraham that through him all nations of the world would be blessed because he trusted and put his hope in God. The Old Testament spoke of the coming of Christ and how the Savior would be born and a king in the line of David. He would rule the world wisely and bless all nations. We too believe in God's promise to send Jesus again to this world to establish his kingdom upon earth. Hope is like a candle shining in a dark place. As we look at the light of the candle, we celebrate the hope we have in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. God, God of Abraham, Abraham and Sarah, Sarah and, and all the prophets of old, you, you are our Father, Father too. Your, Your love, love is revealed, revealed to us in Jesus Christ, Christ Son, Son of God, God and Son of David. David. Help, Help us in preparing to, to celebrate his birth, to make our hearts ready, and to place our hope in you. Help us today and every day to worship you, to hear your word, and to do your will by sharing your hope with others. We ask it in the name of the one who was born in Bethlehem. Amen. Surely the Lord is coming soon. 
Amen. Come, Come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Let us humbly confess our sins against Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in His great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to Him, have mercy on you and pardon and deliver you from all of your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, Lord, have, have mercy, mercy upon us. Christ, have, have mercy upon us. us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Hear the word of God to all that truly turn to him. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Join with me in the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with and your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son Jesus Christ came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when we shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the lessons. First lesson today is a reading from the book of Isaiah, chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you, would re that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood, and the fires causes water to boil, to make your name known to our adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome things that we did not look for, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From of old no one has heard or perceived by the ear, no eye has seen a God besides you, who acts for those who wait for him. You meet him, who joyfully works righteousness. Those who remember you in your ways, behold, you are angry and we sinned. In our sins we have been a long time, and we shall we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean. 
and all the righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls upon your name, who rouses himself to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us, and have made us melt in the hand of our iniquities. But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, and you are the potter. We have all the work of your hand. Be not so terribly angry, O Lord, and remember your iniquity uh, forever. Or, excuse me, remember not our iniquity forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the song. Today's psalm is Psalm 80, verses 1 through 7, and we will be reading responsibly at the asterisk. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead jo Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth. Before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine that we may be saved. O Lord of God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears, and give them tears to drink in full measure. You make us an object of contention for our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and it shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Be seated for the second reading. Our second reading today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse, 9, verse 1 through 9. Paul, called by the will of God, being a possible, Paul called by the will of God to be an apostle of Christ Jesus and our brother, Sosthenes, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to those sanctified by Christ Jesus, called to be saints together, with all those who in every place call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, both their Lords and our Lord, ours and ours. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you, because of the grace of God that was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him all, in all speech and in knowledge, even as the testimony about Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful and by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Please rise for the reading of the Gospel. <clears throat> to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. 
But in those days, after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven, and all the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And the fig tree learn its lesson as soon as its branches become tender and put out its leaves, you know that <coughs> summer is near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. But it is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, he commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the rooster crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Lord Christ. story. Today we trust your promise that your word will not come back empty, and so we believe that we shall be changed by what we hear and by what we read. We also ask that you would form us here at Christ the Redeemer Anglican Church to be your servants, to be the servants you have called us to be. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. It is today that we begin, as you already know, a new church year. It is the first Sunday in Advent, in the Advent season, and our focus will be on the things that we can believe in. This season, as you've heard many times, is all about the preparing of ourselves to receive the light of Christ, the light of Christ that pierces our troubled, dark, and cynical, and completely confusing world. It's a good place to start. It's in our gospel reading for today. Jesus' words are sobering, but in the midst of that sobering thought, also there is hope. He says in Mark 13, 31, Heaven and earth will pass away but my words will not pass away, or my words will endure forever and ever. For me, for me, this is comforting, and it is an encouraging truth. The world may crumble to the ground. Politicians may go and come. Kingdoms will rise and fall, but Jesus and his word will last forever. This revelation of God in Christ Jesus gives us who follow him 
the ultimate stability in the time of trouble and in the time of a very unpredictable world. So I see three ways that we can break down this eternal truth of God's revelation this morning in this gospel passage. These three things we can believe in when everything else is falling apart. These three things we believe in when a global virus and politics have disrupted and stolen from us our weekly worship pattern over these past nine months that we've been passing through. These are three things we can believe in when the state has told us we cannot freely gather for worship as before. And there seems to be something unconstitutional about this, in my own opinion, but who am I to think upon those lines? These three things will be true regardless for all eternity. The first thing, are you ready for it? It's very simple. It's two words. God is. Simply, God is. So after 73 years on this globe for myself, and after about 30 years of preaching on Sundays, now after 65 years, after making a clear decision to be a follower of this man we call Jesus of Nazareth, notwithstanding ups and downs along the way, I have learned, as Father Mack has often said, there is a God, and I am not him. God is. Not you, not your uncle, not your father, not Father Mack, not Deacon Dave, not myself, but God is God. That seems to be a rather simple thing to understand, but it's amazing to me how many people just forget that. In fact, on this first Sunday in Advent, what troubles me a great deal about Christians today is how they feel, how they might feel. That they, that they might have a monopoly on God, that they have some private interpretation of all that it is about, of who God is. When you talk to some believers, some Christians, they think God can be summed up in a theological formula or a few spiritual laws or a few memorized paragraphs. It's like they have God in their back pocket. It's like they have God in a private little box. They may not think that they are God, but they think that they have God all figured out and if you don't think of God in their terms, in their language, and in their systems, then you are outside of what is really a place you need to be. This I have figured out is arrogance. It's arrogance within the Christian landscape. It's arrogance among us. And it's staggering. I mean, we have so many divisions, and we've had them from time all over time. But they really not be. God is interested that we be one, one in the bond of love, one together. But we have dozens of types of Baptists, free will Baptists, this Baptist, that Baptist, first Baptist, eighth Baptist, evangelical free, evangelical free Lutherans, Lutherans this, Lutherans that, Anglicans, Anglicans this, Pentecostal in 500 different flavors. But let me tell you, today, you can take it to the bank. God is bigger. God is wider. God is deeper. God is longer than our finite minds can fathom. God cannot be contained in our language and in our formulas and in our own timeline. God is mystery and he's uncontainable. He is God. I am not. He is God, you are not. But after all of it, God is. God is bigger than our theological systems. God is bigger than our political ideas. God is bigger than our denominations. God is bigger than the church. 
God is bigger than the Bible. These things are all important, but they have their places, but they cannot contain God. Nothing, nothing can. All of our language of God is at best a limited metaphor of it for his power, of his glory, his love, and his grace. And the older I get, and I'm getting old, the older I get, the more I journey along this way, this path, the bigger God gets. And the more I am open to him, to knowing that I just plain don't know at all. God says this through Isaiah, Isaiah 55, 9. My ways are higher than your ways. My thoughts are greater than your thoughts. But aside from all of this, the glory today is God is and we are not. And there's a great comfort. There's a great security for me, a great trust that comes from knowing that the God who created this world, who created the universe, in this cosmic system, he's got us in his hands. And this God that is doesn't think like I think. He doesn't think like you think. He doesn't respond the way I would respond. God's ways are higher and bigger than our own finite ways. So on this Sunday in Advent, I take personally great comfort from all of this that there are certain non-negotiables about our God. God is love. God is our creator. God is our redeemer. God is our sustainer. And on and on and on, but most of all, God is. You are not. I am not but God is. So how can we really know and understand this great big God if he is bigger than we can fathom? And this leads me to the second thing we can believe in. Not only God is, but God can be known and experienced in his only begotten son, Jesus of Nazareth. So over in the book of Colossians 1, chapter, chapter 1, verse 15, it is stated clearly, he, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. We may disagree on the interpretation of Scripture. We may disagree politically. We may disagree on the stance Christians take on particular issues ad nauseum. We may disagree at doctrine and theology. But one thing we as Christians can stand together on is that God's love and grace can be known and experienced in and through the Son, Jesus Christ. You want to know what God is like? Read the Gospels and see God in flesh and blood reaching out to the world and saving his world. Now, Lammy and I have a little Boston Terrier. She's a rescue dog. She was used as a breeder dog in Florida, lived most of her time in a crate. And after her breeding years were done, she was handed down to a couple of owners that didn't treat her well. And we took her in about a year, over a year ago in October. And her name is Maggie. Uh, I, she's a little gray lady. Uh, we call her, her our Frosty Bosty. She is now almost completely blind. She can't see like she could even a year ago when we adopted her. In spite of this, she knows us and she trusts us because of the way that we encounter her and the way we help her. When we first got her, her little eye, diminished eyesight then made her jerk away when our feet came near her because someone along the way, someone probably was used to kicking her when she got near her. So she jerked, and we couldn't even get near her. When we talked to her, now she knows we love her, and she can trust us. When we pick her up and put her on the bed, she knows we love her, and she can trust us. 
She depends on us for her happiness and safety. So when I look at our little Maggie, as crazy as this sounds, I see myself in God. I am blind. I cannot know God on my own. God knows I can't save myself or even stay safe by myself. I am my own worst choice maker. Left to our own devices and decisions, we are lost. So because God is, and because he is revealed in his own son, he picks us up and he rescues us from sin and death. He rescues us from ourselves and puts us on the right path. We can't see God, but we are in the care of Christ so that we might know him. We know him because of that, that he is love, and that that love is all that matters to us. We are Maggie's life. We are all that matter to her. God is, and he has revealed himself to us in his son, Jesus Christ. All else is secondary. Here's the third thing, and the last thing that we can believe in. This experience of God's love in Christ transforms people. It changes lives. I love our Archbishop Foley Beach. I am struck, I am absolutely struck every time I listen to his sermons or anything that he says that he has an obsession with the idea that people are lost and they need Jesus. Can you imagine that? He is not bogged down by doctrine. He is not bogged down by politics. He is not bogged down in how or when or even if Jesus will return. For him, it is simple. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is coming again. Be ready. Try to get as many as you can to know this and accept our Christ before he returns. That's his message over and over again. So on this Sunday in Advent 2020, God is, God reveals himself in his son. This truth transforms people and will set you and I free. Doctrine doesn't change people. Theological systems, no matter how lofty, don't change people. Denominations and institutions don't change people. The language that clergy speak to each other when they meet doesn't change people. God can use these instruments to get his message across, I admit that. But it is God's love and grace experienced in Christ that brings total, eternal change in people. Over the years, I have observed it. Ordinary people receiving healing from the forgiveness of their sins, relationships restored, and great healing comes to all. Old ways pass away and all things become new. It can happen to individuals. It can happen to churches. It can happen to nations. God is. God reveals himself in his son. This truth transforms people and will set you and I free. That's what the church is all about. Being a vessel for people to be transformed by God's love in Christ. Now let me close with an illustration. I read an account this past week that was so very vivid to me. About a lady that was 45 years old and she claimed that she was once a total wreck. She was a single mother with kids and had no job and no motivation whatsoever. She visited a church one day and heard uh, this message of Jesus and his love. And out of her hungry heart, she became a believer and follower of Christ, and he became her Lord and Savior. That experience on that day completely awakened her. 
She went on to go to college. She paid her way through a, a school to become an administrative assistant on a big job for a company. She got a BA degree and a master's degree, and she got all A's in her particular field. Years later, she wrote back to her pastor in an email that spoke of her experience over time. She said this, isn't Jesus amazing? I don't know why more Christians don't believe in the miracles of Jesus. I believe in them. He healed me. What could be more miraculous than the forgiveness of sins or the taking away of all my bitterness and all my resentment and all my doubts? My peace and joy are indescribable. I laugh all the time now when I thought I would never laugh again. I am grateful beyond words. I feel like, and I love this, I feel like I have swallowed sunshine. So there you have it. God is, you can know and experience God in Christ, and the experience of God's love in Christ transforms and changes people. These are three things you can believe in, not only in this Advent season, but for all time and for all eternity. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ is coming again. And our gospel says it clear. But concerning that day or that hour or year or decade, no one knows. No one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only, only the Father. Be on guard. Keep awake, for you do not know when that time will come. We look in this Advent season for the coming of the King. Let's pray together. Father, in Advent, the church prepares the way for Jesus. Help me to clear that path in my own heart, too. Show me the distractions in my life Block me from worship of you this Advent. Lord, I await your coming. As I celebrate the first Advent, as we celebrate the first Advent, the first coming, I look toward the day where I will see you face to face. Give me a heart, Lord, that looks for your coming on a daily basis. Show me today how I need to be refined, purified, and forgiven. Give me the strength to ask for forgiveness for the many areas that I fall short. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Amen. Let's turn now and confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified and upon his fire he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As if we have been bidden to come and go up to the mountain of our Lord, to the house of our God, let us go to prayer. 
confidently believing that our Lord will both hear and give answer to our petitions and supplications. Mighty Lord, raise up for us good and faithful leaders in this and every land who will respect and protect life as sacred, honor the sacred trust placed in them, and serve to promote and defend liberty and justice for all people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, grant us faith to welcome you in your word and sacrament and you who will come again in glory as Lord and judge to bring completion to completion all that you began. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Lord, comfort those <coughs> in pain of body or spirit, relieve those who suffer, and give healing to all in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, as we remember and start the start of another church year and begin anew our journey to recall the birth of your birth, revelation, and suffering, death, and resurrection of your dear Son and our Savior, grant that we may be well instructed by your word, strengthened in faith, and equipped for daily service, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Blessed Lord, remembering the faithful who lived and died in Christ and now rest from their labors, bring us with them to know your mercies face to face, that when Christ comes in his glory, we may welcome him with praise and hosannas and enter with him into the everlasting feast he has prepared for all who love him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. prayer. Christ the King, we praise, we pray for health workers who are caring for those with COVID-19, for their protection from the virus, for stamina during long or intense uh, uh, work hours for health workers to seek you during this crisis. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. prayer. Coming, Lord, we now pray for ourselves, our families, and those we love. We take a moment now to pray privately or aloud with our individual petitions. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our, Hear our prayer. prayer. All these things, O oh Lord, we pray, knowing that you, in your fatherly wisdom and care, will grant us what is good and right for us and for our salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord, who reigns and lives with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are pulled to pray. Our Father, Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Just uh, one brief announcement this day, uh, as you've already learned by email and the posting on our Facebook page, we are planning to have a Christmas Eve service. This will be at the Chinese Alliance Church in Richland, and uh, we're excited that we're going to be able together to do that at 5 o'clock on Christmas Eve. Um, we're thankful for the Alliance Church allowing us to be there. We will abide the best we can to all the restrictions that have been placed upon us. As we go out from this first Sunday of Advent, be the people of hope. Let hope live in your heart and share the hope of Christ with all that you meet. Share hope by noticing someone else's good deeds. Share hope by listening to someone else's story. Share hope by praying for our world. 
In this Advent season, we need to see, feel, and share hope. As you go out into the wonder of God's creation, share hope with those that you meet. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Amen. Amen.